Hi. Hi everyone. Um Okay. Okay, my name is Chivera from LDE News TV and I'm here to discuss um CBN's restrictions on cryptocurrency related accounts with Mr. Franklin Peters and I think he has joined us. So I'll add Mr. Franklin right now. Um, please, Mr. Franklin, please, can you request so I will join you to the live? If you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening. Good evening. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Okay. Um, right. welcome to the welcome to the interview. Um, my name is Chivera Ubiajulu from LDE News TV, okay. and your special guest today. So, um, I just have like a few questions. I want to discuss certain things with you on picking brains. Um, okay. first of all, um. I know you're an active cryptocurrency uh, professional. Uh, like you've been in cryptocurrency for a very long time. Yeah. But uh, can you just explain? Can you just um, uh, tell us more about you? Just like introduce yourself so that I'll get to know you better. All right. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Franklin Peters. Okay. I'm the founder of Beat FXT Technologies and uh, Boundless Bay. Um, okay. I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Igbo. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I've I've been uh, into the tech space for more than ten years now. Um, you know, and I fell in love with cryptocurrency and blockchain when I saw it gave me wings to fly. All right. Okay. I had talked about the internet and how people could get um, uh, liberated from their locality you know, and get into the global space through the internet, how people could make money for themselves without really depending on, you know, their governments. Yes. Up until when I came across, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrencies, and I saw that it amplified my voice. And so I tried to get into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And I saw that there were lots of, you know, um, hiccups and um, um, issues or problems. And as a computer scientist, um what we do is solving problems right that's that's what we, we we are trained to do so i found problem and if there's a problem then there's a solution and if there's a solution then we find that solution so that's that's it i've been in the crypto space actively for about six years now since 2015 till 2021 is about six years and um it's really not been a very rosy ride <laughs> it's been like up and down like what just happened yesterday uh, yeah, uh, day before. Yeah. yeah so so that's that's me okay okay it's very it's nice to meet you but if i'm being honest with you right like i'm not really into cryptocurrency I oh. basics, yeah, about um, be, it being a digital, a digital currency and uh, mm -hmm. decentralized system and the rest of it. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, for the benefit of me and a couple of other people who do not really know about this crypto, you know, I mean, it got popular recently and now yeah. that it's, yeah, people are talking about it and so many people have, they don't have idea about it. So, can you just give us a little insight about cryptocurrency? Just a little insight so that we we'll understand better. All right. So, um, I'll start. I'll start with uh, the the core of cryptocurrency, okay. right? The core is um, blockchain, and um, I want you to see cryptocurrency as money, nothing more, nothing. Less. Yes, it is digital money, and it is powered by a technology called blockchain. Um, the goal, the primary goal for cryptocurrency is to boycott centralized systems. You know, boycott the banks. I'm going to be loud about it this time around. Before we used to, you know, cream it, and, you yeah. know, take it very soft. Yeah. But now the, the the government have shown us that they are really not with us. So we have to call a spade a spade, right? Um, yeah. So the reason for cryptocurrency is to 
take the banks out of the way and decentralize currency and get people to transact peer-to-peer -peer among each other. So I actually don't need a third party to verify my transactions or to, you know, vet me before they approve my transactions. My money is my money. My money is with me. And I can give it to whoever I want to give my money to yeah. without any delays. It can be someone in U.S., someone in Canada. I can send money to the person instantly without any delays. That's the goal for cryptocurrencies. And, um, and that is what cryptocurrency is. It exists on the internet. It can be stored in our phones, on our laptops. You know, you can keep it, you know, it's digital. So uh, yeah. most people like me, when I got into cryptocurrencies, um, it, there was no education then, right? There were just a few persons who talked about it. And um, I remember going to YouTube to search for uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and I wasn't really finding um, results. As you, yeah, as, as you will find today, like even LDE have a lot of contents regarding cryptocurrencies. And so newbies um, are, not, are not stranded. You know, they're able to see uh, information that would help them to navigate their way around. So those days, I used to think that at some point, there could be a physical Bitcoin printed so that, you know, because I, I was just coming from <laughs> from a fiat society, right? Okay, just like yeah. most newbies that are coming into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies now, um, some of them actually think that somehow there is a physical uh, stuff that, you know, could represent that. But just for everybody to know, there is no physical and there will never be any physical representation of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. It's digital, it's digital. It's digital. Okay, okay. So um, now for the main purpose of why we are here, um, yeah. about the science directive, the new directive that is trending everywhere now. Like, can I hear like your honest opinions? What do you have to say about it? Like, I've heard so many people talk about it. It's been trending, and so many people are against it. So many people are in support. So I would like to hear your own opinion. Like, what do you think about this whole CBN uh, restricting and banning um, people who have the cryptocurrency accounts? All right. So. Um... For me, I, I anticipated it at some point. And um, after a while, I when, when we started having a series of meetings with um, STEC and NIDA and a couple of other government institu institutions um, regarding, you know, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, our relationship with the government and government's take on, on cryptocurrencies with some mm -hmm. pedals. I actually thought that, you know, because of those meetings and discussions, because usually they would consult us and ask us to give them our opinion and what we think about, you know, government and cryptocurrency. And we'll take our time, do the research, give them our own, you know, we had a lot of meetings. So we felt that we were on the same page with them, right? Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, they are, they are referring to a news or a publication they made in 2017, and they are saying sequel to that, they are stopping banks from offering crypto you know, services to cryptocurrency um, um, companies. So my own honest opinion and take is that Nigeria is really not stable for investments, right? Um, this had, has affected a lot of companies, um, you know, individuals like myself and other exchange owners and traders who did not get any leeway from the government um, or, or support from the government. Like, I mean, job, people that finish from school, no job, no opportunities and they created opportunities for themselves leveraging on cryptocurrencies these guys have not done anything bad they have not robbed anybody they have not you know they have not they are, they are silent they are silently putting food on their table taking advantage of cryptocurrencies and all of a sudden you 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 you, you, you try to stop their businesses you know let's call it spade a spade like i said right i want to say something Hey, Bitcoin chief, greetings. So let's assume now that um, the government wants to stop Dangote from operating in Nigeria. What are they going to do? What's the first step they'll take? Close down his bank account, right? And, that's, and he would have stopped his businesses from running. Like every bank account that, that is connected to Dangote, right? If they shut it down, what would happen? business is over because of course there's no liquidity to, to perform transactions that's exactly what their blockhead told them to do so that they will stop cryptocurrency transactions in nigeria but they can't stop us it's, we, you can't censor cryptocurrency traders they are so far the 
main reason why cryptocurrencies was created is so that we don't even need banks. So, you know, stopping these transactions, banks from, you know, for offering service to us would only, you know, cripple one aspect of our, tra you know, our, our services, right, that depended on bank, more like making it easy for people to cash out their cryptocurrencies into their bank account or those of us who plan to offer ATM card services. That's the only arm it stopped. But the, did it really stop our activities as traders? I will shock you. Within 48 eight hours of, of that news, OTC yeah. trader did more than a billion naira in transactions. Which bank has done that? Within eight, 48 hours, more than a billion naira in transactions. So they, they simply, you know, helped us. Let me tell you something, right? Yeah. Money has right now flown into the black market for cryptocurrency traders. For those who don't understand the opportunity here, it means that as an OTC trader, you know, business has reversed back like the way it was in 2017. People made much more money in 2017, 2016, 2015 through OTC than they are making now because banks are taking the shine, right? Centralized exchanges that are connected to banks and are making transaction, transaction processing very easy. Right, had, had taken the shine. So they now started determining the rates. So before you even buy Bitcoin, some people would go to Binance and check for the rates in Binance before they'll come and start, you know, pricing you. And if you are not if you are not able to offer you know competitive rates as an OTC trader, you know, something that could beat what Binance is offering, then nobody will trade with you, they'll go straight to Binance, right? And using Binance as an instance because they are the most popular and the biggest globally. So um with this now. Those people do not have any choice but come back to you and trade with you. So it's an opportunity. For me, every every challenge or problem is an opportunity. It's actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, actually, you said something about like the government not helping the youth and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. and actually, when I read the news yesterday, I went to all the e-news and I read about it. And I said, you know what, let me go to Twitter, Instagram. Let me yeah. go to social media and check what people are saying. You understand? Yeah. So I went on Twitter and actually people, some people were in support of this, like the government, mm -hmm. what the government did. Some people were against it. And I want to read, there's a tweet that I actually saw and I quote, okay. he said, the person said, it's a good move, like to stop the whole cryptocurrency exchange. It's a good move. Nigeria yeah. is not right. Nigeria is not right for crypto. A lot of politicians and expatriates smuggle money out of the country and lots of Yahoo boys are duping people using crypto however nigerian government should look into creating naira crypto and he was not the only one so many people were talking about like uh, crypto did this one people scam with crypto uh people do people and the rest of it so and some people were like yes they should stop it so i was like does it mean i don't know does it mean there's like their them crypto has disadvantages to it so i was like let me ask you because you're a professional in the field so that you will tell me if the uh disadvantages or the advantages actually are at where the disadvantages so i would like to hear from you all right all right so there, there are people who are ill informed right in um yeah in subject matters and those are the people who even get more loud when topics that they don't understand pops yeah. up so you can imagine people saying, ah, it's cryptocurrency. The truth is that there is no currency that people don't use for scamming. In every sector, there are good actors and there are bad actors. You can't take that away. No matter, even in churches, there are bad pastors, there are good pastors. In uh, politics, they are good. You can't say that everybody in politics are bad. There are good ones and there are bad ones. So so you can't stop that. They are, they are, as far as something it could bring money and food to people's table. There are people that will take good advantage of it and there are people that will take bad advantage of it, right? So are you going to bar Naira because people also, you know, um, um, defraud people or dupe them of their Naira? Are you going to ban, ban um, um, US dollars because people, you know, dupe people with US dollars? So what makes cryptocurrency different? In fact, it's even more easier to track transaction activities on the blockchain network than it is, right? When you do that with um so 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 what these guys are we are supposed to do or meant to do was um layers with existing companies, you know, businesses like us, you know, hey Binara, it's good to have you. Um, you know, layers with us, connect with us, ask us how do we do business, how do we how do we work with you to make this sector work?
Now, um, there are co countries, you know, um, you know, uh, like the, the, the UAE that have taken advantage of the blockchain. Even the government has taken advantage of the blockchain to offer solution to the globe, to the world at large. And guess what? Nigeria will patronize those services. Our money will leave Nigeria. It will come to the UAE and they, they will grow their economy. We will keep pushing people away. This is exactly the same thing that happened last um, um, last two years, uh, 2019, um, when they, they started you know, fighting um, Okada riders, Max NG and um, Go Kada. So what, why, why, why should you stop people who are building the economy? The real pillars of every country's economy are entrepreneurs. It's not the government workers. It's not whatever the government feel they can give to the people. The real, the real pillars of economies are, are you know, entrepreneurs. In, in UAE, what do they do? They, 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 they made businesses tax-free. Like UAE is, is, is a tax-free nation. They don't tax businesses. So it's easy for people to come from all over the world, establish their businesses. You see Lamborghini's office here. You see Ford. You see, you see, you see. There are no kind of office that you, you know, company that you not see here. So why now? Because those people, you know, they are, they are, you know, they are. It's easy for them to, you know, offer discounts yeah. and sell their products at, at prices, right? The money keeps circulating. The money keeps circulating, but when when you make your economy, you know, uh, 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 your um, difficult for people to do business and flourish, what happens? You chase the existing businesses away. You kill the the ones that you know, that are there. Then the ones who want to come into the country and and you know establish businesses, you scare them away because somehow within two years or three years, you 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 know people who have five years business plan, their business don't survive more than two years. That's the truth. Their businesses don't survive more than two years. Why? Because of all this government, you know, instability in, in, in uh, policies. So, so that, that I think I don't know, you know, um, what do you call it? I, I, I engaged a couple of people within this space, and um, nobody is happy. But we still know that they can't stop us. That's the truth. They can't. Okay. So, um, what's the way forward? Like, what do you have to tell people? Who are actually are interested in this crypto, the whole crypto? What's the way for? What do you think? Do you think our government is not is they are not ready to actually work with the people, or the Nigerians are not actually ready to accept crypto? What do you think is the way forward? How can we actually push this movement? All right. So, so hey, Emeka, what's good? Um, Nigerians are ready. You know, okay. this this question keeps popping up. There is nothing positive that puts food on people's Table that Nigerians are not ready to attack head on. You understand? The only issue is anybody that have not gotten into crypto has probably not understood how it works. Are you getting it? It's either they yeah. don't understand how it works, how they can benefit from it. But the truth is that once you're able to make the education very easy and straightforward for them to understand that this is money and this is the future you know you can take advantage i mean within the last four months people have made bastard money in crypto even in nigeria there are people who bought some coins those coins have done more than a thousand percent you know um i mean this is not the only reason why people get into crypto is not to make money do you understand yeah. they will facilitate their transactions and all whatnot so you know so when when Nigerians are ready. The problem is that the, the country is not ready for us. And if the country is not ready for us, then we could go and find our, 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 our bearing in places that are ready for us. You know, I mean, you may not physically leave Nigeria, but you can stay in Nigeria and still do your business globally. You know, so so right now the education is even going to be much more fierce. Um, uh, the, the awareness, they are actually not... You know, they don't know that they have given us more awareness. I've, I've gotten calls even from my mom. But I had told, told my mom about cryptocurrency. She's aware of it. I've, I've educated her. And then immediately this news came up. She called me and said, ah, I hope this is not affecting your business. Uh, she was even explaining some things to me and I was shocked. You understand? Even my dad called me, yeah. right? So, so everybody is now getting to know. In Nigeria, there's nothing like negative publicity. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's how he's threatening me. Hey, Frank, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to put some pictures online and I'm going to make sure I tarnish your image. I'm cracking. I'm saying, go ahead, go ahead. Like, I'm, I've been looking for how to train. At least I train for one week on, on Twitter. Everybody will get to know me. I'll have one million followers. I'll open business. I'll become an influencer. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. So, so there's nothing like this publicity um in my opinion this is um there's nothing negative about this apart from those of us who have invested heavily in providing solutions that are attached to um banks we, we, we don't have anything to to worry about so just to get people to know how to trade um otc trade p2p or probably um trade uh what do you call it um um uh, uh uh, other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin against USDT, you know, without stressing about trading BTC against Naira or sports exchanges. Yeah, I, th I think your network is breaking. <laughs> 